Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all well and thank you very much for tuning in. In this video, I am going to take you through my key bindings and sensitivities for the Aerosoft CRJ. I am using the Thrustmaster TCA Quadrant and add-on as well as the side stick and I'm going to take you through how to set those up in the Aerosoft CRJ and I'm also going to explain how to set up uh, an external application called Axis and O's which is going to enable us to map all of the buttons possible on the TCA quadrant so things like the parking brake and the landing gear and the flaps axis that don't work in Microsoft Flight Simulator by default. So first of all, I'm going to take you through my bindings and sensitivity in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and then we'll jump over to Axis and O's later and have a look at that. All right, so let's jump into the cockpit then and have a look. So before we actually mess with anything in here, let's go to the controls menu and I'll first go on to my side stick. Now, a lot of these are fairly default and I'm not going to explain them in too much detail. I'll just point out the ones that I've changed here from the default. So uh, for the CRJ, I bound the flight director pitch sync to button two, which is on the back of the joystick just above the trigger and what this one does is it is basically for let me just show you here so i'll turn the battery on and we'll get some external power here real quick okay so what the sync button is is it's actually in the real aircraft located just on the back of the yoke here you can't actually see it in the uh in the sim, you can't get the camera around there and it's it's not really visible, but uh, you can see there's an arrow that points to it here just behind. And what this does is it actually syncs the flight directors to your current uh, position on the attitude indicator. So if you have the flight directors turned on in flight, which you should do, then if you press the sync button, I'm gonna actually press it right here. There's a, a click spot for it right here. Uh, obviously because you can't reach this button in sim uh, just so you can see what I'm doing but once I press that you'll see sync flashes up there for a second and if you're in flight that will basically just sync the flight director then to uh, your current uh, attitude it's not something I use a great deal but but it is nice to have it within a sort of fingers reach because when you do need it, you kind of manually fly in the aircraft, so it's it's good to have it there if uh, if you ever do need to use it. And then, other than that, I have only really added the trim to the hat switch on up and down. That's really the only other thing I've changed on the side stick. I have also unbound everything else that was bound to these buttons at the bottom here and this slider. Uh, because of my control setup, um, well, number one, I don't need to use this throttle slider because I have a the, the quadrant, and I um, have have mapped all of these buttons using axes as a nose, which will uh, will go into later on in the video. All these camera modes, these are all sort of default binds. Uh, I basically just had to unbind the ones that were up and down on the hat switch, so I could replace it with the. Uh, with the elevator trim. And then sensitivity wise, I've got a 42% on the X and Y, that's for the sort of roll and pitch. And uh, I think they're working pretty well for me. I might just drop it down so it's a little bit more sensitive, but I think that's, that's a pretty good spot. Uh, I've got a slight extremity dead zone on it as well. And, uh, and that's it really. The Z-axis I used to use for the rudder, but I, I don't use anymore because I've got rudder pedals now. We'll, we'll go into that uh, when we jump over to the quadrant. That's where they're attached. And then the slider is obviously, you know, it's, it's completely unused at the moment. All right, so jumping over to the quadrant. Now, this is where I had to set it up basically from scratch for the CRJ, so I'll run through most things here. So first of all, we've got auto throttle to GA, uh, mapped to these two side buttons on the actual levers themselves. 
This is basically the toga button. I talked about this uh, a lot in my tutorials for the CRJ. But uh, yeah, basically it's just this button right here. So I mapped it to both sides so it's realistic to the actual aircraft. Obviously it's on both sides there. And uh, as you're probably aware, that's activating the takeoff mode. You probably use this every time you take off or at least you should be doing. And it activates the takeoff mode or even the go around mode if you're in flight. Uh, you can also access it with this click spot here in case you are unaware. And uh, yeah, so I've got that mapped on to the quadrant on the two side buttons. Next up, the brakes. I've got mapped to the toe brakes on my rudder pedals. Fairly self-explanatory. And then rudder axis again on the rudder pedals. Again, uh, not too much to say about that. It's not unique to the CRJ. Spoilers axis. Now, this is one of the very few binds that do actually work properly for the CRJ on the TCA add-on. So the spoiler axis, as you probably used on the A320, if you're using the Thrustmaster TCA add-on, and that works perfectly fine in the Aerosoft CRJ. So that's that one. We've then got the uh, rudder trim. That works perfectly fine. Obviously, there's a dedicated rudder trim dial on the TCA add-on. So you've got the rudder trim left and right and the reset button. They all work perfectly fine. No issues at all. And then you've got the throttle axis mapped as, uh, as, as you would normally do. Now, these do differ slightly from what is uh, usually used in Microsoft Flight Simulator. As you're probably aware at this point, you will need to map these two assignments rather than the uh, usual ones that you use in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you normally use this one with 0 to 100%. You don't want to use that for the Aerosoft CRJ, otherwise the throttle won't work properly. So you need to make sure you have that one on uh, your throttle levers. Now on the sensitivity, these are straightforward really. The le throttle levers themselves are basically completely linear as well as the spoiler axis, which is down here. And uh, the flap axis doesn't actually work with the Aerosoft CRJ, so don't need to worry about that one for this profile. And then I've got my rudder pedals set to minus 51. I do find the rudder is still quite sensitive and sort of twitchy feeling in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I, I think this is sort of okay. I'm still not 100% pleased with it, but minus 51% on the plus and minus and 2% dead zone on there. And uh, yeah, that's working okay for me. All right, so let's just jump into the aircraft very quickly and just have a look at the throttle cal calibration. So basically I have this set up as I like it here, so I'm not gonna change anything, but uh, basically for the TCA throttle quadrant, what you'll need to do is make sure it's on dual axis and throttle hardware has a reverser axis. You need that ticked as well, or turned on rather. And then basically what you wanna do is you just wanna set your throttle quadrant to each of these different positions and uh, and click set on both sides. So on my quadrant, for some reason, it it has a little bit of a an offset between the left and right um levers i think it's just the way it's manufactured unfortunately but uh, as you can see these two values are slightly different in the climb detent and one of them's a little bit more wobbly than the other as well so uh, you might find these numbers are not exactly the same on both sides and uh, i mean unless you consider that a major issue uh, that is fine and it does work fine once you've got it set up properly one thing i would say about the detents on the TCA quadrant is that you may find that between idle and climb that it is very very sensitive on the quadrant so when you're trying to sort of track a, a specific speed while you're in cruise you might find it quite difficult to get the power exactly right for you know a combination of things really number one the CRJ is dealing with the throttle input in a little bit of a unique way from what I've learned and two, like I say, the physical design of the TCA quadrant. So you can get around this 
in a couple of fairly simple ways. And the easiest way really that I would suggest is to just remove the detents from the TCA quadrant. If you flip it over and unscrew the screws underneath, uh, if you're not sure on them, just check your manual. But there's some four screws underneath and you can basically just remove the move, remove the physical detents from the uh, quadrant and then it'll just be a smooth travel from idle to max. And you can turn on the throttle detents hint on the PFD in uh, the EFB here and basically it will show you here what detent you're in. And that could be quite useful if you don't have detents on your throttle quadrant and if you remove them. And I think that's a good option because then it will enable you to basically map more travel between idle and climb and it'll just give you a bit more precision there. So that's one option. The other option is basically just to map each of the detents sort of a little bit further up. So you would map climb basically normally where you would have toga and then I would suggest mapping toga a little bit above where you would normally have it sort of in between the max and uh, the sort of second to last detent there. So you would map sort of toga uh maybe at about sort of i'll show you on the efb it's probably easier so maybe i would map toga so that's full c on the throttle one and two 16 3, 8, 4 is a full i would maybe map toga sort of there and then max power all the way at the end and then that's going to give you again a bit more travel between idle and climb and that's another easy option that you can do or as the third option and what I do is I have some actual actual custom 3D printed physical detents for the TCA quadrant. So I actually had a friend that does 3D printing. He printed the uh, the detents out for me. I've, I've found a file online and uh, that basically just increases the range between idle and climb and still allows you to have the detents or toga and max power and uh, that's a really really good one i think if you uh, if you have access to a 3d printer or you know somewhere you can get it printed i'll leave a link in the description below to the file that you can use to actually print that off uh, basically all you'll need to do is just give that to your 3d printer and they should be able to print it off for you and i think that's ultimately the best option but uh, again, it depends on whether you have access to that or not. All right, so that is about as far as you can go within Microsoft Flight Simulator itself in terms of binding what is there already on the TCA quadrant. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a way to reliably get the parking brake or the gear lever to work um and uh, the engine mode selector switch as well i couldn't really find a use for that within microsoft flight simulator you guys might be able to come up with something creative but uh, what i've come up with in axis and o's which we'll go into momentarily is i think a pretty amazing solution and i'm really really pleased with how i managed to get that to turn out now if you don't want to get axis and o's I did find a way you could make the parking brake and the gear lever somewhat functional. So what you would do is go in and bind the parking brake to the parking brake button, obviously, and you want to use the bind set parking brake, not toggle. And um, basically, this sort of works. And what you have to do is you have to first use the parking brake at least once. So you have to click it at least once and then... Let me just make sure the chocks are off here. So there we go. So now I should be able to turn the parking brake on and off using the switch. And of course, when I'm using the video, it, it doesn't work. There we go. Okay, so it works there. You see, I had to just turn it off there. And, and now it's working. I'm just toggling it on and off using the controller now. And that does seem to work. It doesn't seem to animate, but you can see it is actually on there. So that is a, a kind of semi-reliable solution that you can use, but it's not, it's not perfect. Another thing you could do is for the landing gear is you can search for gear. And basically as the TCA add-on, the gear lever is only got one switch on it. So unfortunately you can't, 
set gear up to the up position and gear down to the down position because it's only got one switch there. So you can set gear up and that's the only op- only bind that really works there. And you can just use it to bring the gear up but not get the gear down. So that's that's that. Unfortunately, set gear or toggle landing gear, they don't work. You can try them, but you'll see what I mean. They don't really work. Now, as a final workaround, and if you don't have the add-on, this would be perfect for you especially. Um, but what I did for a little while is I actually had the toggle landing gear on this button here, number five on the little push button as well as the set parking brake on number six. So those are ones that you could probably use as well uh, as a workaround if you don't want to use axis and O's. All right, so getting into axis and O's then. Axis and O's is a payware application. And whilst you may not be able to justify getting a payware application just for this single aircraft, do remember you can use it with any aircraft in the sim and you can access all of the LVARs and lots and lots of different configurations within the sim and it really is quite powerful once you get to learn it. And I, I personally have had a lot of success with setting it up with the CRJ. I've also set up some bindings for the A32 and X auto break which don't exist in Microsoft Flight Simulator yet by default. So I've, I've found quite a good use of it so far and uh, I think you know given a bit more time I could you could really get some really complicated stuff set up with this but this is not a tutorial for Axis and O's itself I'm just going to show you how you can set it up for the Aerosoft CRJ. So the Application itself you can get from Just Flight. That's where I got it from. I think it's on Sim Market as well, but I got it from Just Flight and it was £14 in the UK. So it's relatively inexpensive really for how powerful it is. And uh, there are many other, you know, airport scenery add-ons and things like that that are more expensive than that. So it's really not too bad when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so to get Axis and O's set up with the Aerosoft CRJ, I'm going to assume that you've successfully installed it at this point and you have the application launched. You will need to be in the simulator. You can either be spawned in at a gate like this, or you can actually just select the aircraft within the hangar in the main menu, and uh, it should work. Axis and O's will basically assign the controls on a per aircraft basis. So you need to have an aircraft selected for it to actually recognize it. It should say the aircraft type here at the top. And uh, it will basically assign the controllers per aircraft. It also basically will recognize each different livery as a completely different aircraft as well. So there is something that we'll have to cover on that uh, once we've uh, been through the initial setup here. But uh, we'll do the initial setup first of all. However, I would recommend being spawned in at a gate so you can actually test all the keybinds work properly once you've uh, set everything up here. So it really, really is quite simple. Now, this is a very powerful and quite a daunting application once you first get, get into it. But what I've done here is I've set up some templates. So all you guys really need to do is just import them and you should be good to go. You don't really need to mess with anything. So uh, first of all, you, what you want to do is you want to import your scripts first. So again, the link to download the scripts is in the description below. Click on scripting once you've done that and import scripts. You'll then want to just navigate to wherever you downloaded that to, which in my case, it's here in this folder. And you want to use the CRJ scripts underscore AAO file and uh, click open. Once you click open, that will bring up another window and it'll say select scripts to import. And you want to just click on this tick box next to where it says CRJ. Uh, CRJ is the group of scripts and then these are all the scripts below it. So you want to just click on that to import them all. I'm not going to click import because I've already got them on my uh, system here. So then once you've imported the scripts, you'll then want to go to templates and import templates. That will bring up a similar dialogue. And again, you want to you want to navigate to where you downloaded the template file to. Again, the template is in the description below. And it is called ASCRJ.tmpl. 
You want to click on that and click open. That will bring up this window here and it should say template and file ASCRJ. That's the template we want. So we'll click on that and then click import. You'll get a confirmation that the import has been successful. And then we're nearly done here, actually. It's very, very simple. Like I say, we just go on templates now, apply template to this aircraft. And then that will bring up the apply template window. You click on ASCRJ and then click apply. That will then bring up another dialog box, which is not, you can't, you guys can't see it right now because it's for some reason brought it up on my second screen and I can't bring it over. But we'll ask you, do you want the template to replace or merge with the current aircraft configuration? You want to just press replace because it doesn't really matter. There's nothing there. It's not going to change any of your bindings within Microsoft Flight Simulator. So don't worry about it replacing anything. It's just basically Axis and O's is completely separate to Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I've built these binds to sort of complement what we've already set up in this video. So this is not going to overwrite anything that you've already done. And there you go. Everything is set up. As you can see here, we've got a flaps axis set here and then a bunch of other bindings here, which uh, is probably best for me to just show you in the simulator rather than showing you on this list here because it's, it's kind of a bit, a bit mystifying really as to uh, what they all mean. But uh, you can kind of get a general idea, but I'll show you in the aircraft here. So I'll minimize this and then I'll just bring up the my other camera here so you can see what I'm doing with my hands and uh, it should all make a bit more sense. So first of all, we have a working flaps axis now. So if, if we get a bit of a better angle here, um, you can see here as I move the flaps axis it works all the way from start to finish now because the aerosoft crj or the crj in general it has five five positions of flaps rather than four as per the airbus which the tca add-on is built around the detents aren't going to perfectly line up so what i've set this up to do is basically you can have flaps 8 20 30 and 45 on each of the detents and they work perfectly. Now to get flaps one, you'll need to put the flaps lever sort of in between zero and the first detent. And that does work fine. However, if you didn't like that for whatever reason, it is quite easy to knock it out of that position. So you could potentially just remove the mechanical detent for the flaps axis. It's entirely up to you, but I think this works fine, honestly, and uh, that's probably the best way I've managed to do it for this. Or, you know, alternatively, if, you, if you're a whiz with uh, 3D printer, you could maybe make a custom uh, mechanical detent and 3D print that. <laughs> that could be an option as well, but I'm not very good at that stuff. So um, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just sticking with this for now. All right, and then going down to the pedestal, the parking brake is fully working now. So if I twist this on, there you go, it comes on and it does animate as well. So it's working perfectly. You can see here if I go to the iCast displays, parky brake on, parky brake off, everything is working absolutely perfectly there. No issues at all. The landing gear lever is also working perfectly. So if I go over here, you can see I'm just going to have to hold this downlock release because it otherwise won't release while I'm on the ground. Up and down works perfectly. Beautiful. All right. And then a few of the other bindings that I made here, which might not be so obvious. So I bound the thrust reverser arm switches to the engine mode. Well, the engine on off switches basically on the throttle quadrant. I think they worked quite nice because they are fairly similar sort of switches and they're located in a similar position as on the quadrant itself. So I thought that was quite a nice little realistic uh, emulation there of the CRJ. And then I have also bound onto the two push buttons here. I bound the APU buttons. So generally when I'm on a taxi in and I want to kind of keep my hands on, on my quadrant and my side stick, I don't really want to be looking around the cockpit too much. So I've actually bound the APU there. So the left button here is the power 
button, power fuel. So you'll see there, APU is uh, APU door is now open, and you've got the APU indications. And then the second button on the right hand side is just the start stop button. There we go. And uh, yeah, it works great. As you can see, it lights up, it animates, you hear the sound, and the APU should now be starting up. All right, great stuff. And then finally, the last thing that I bound here using Axis and O's, and this is the thing that I'm most proud of really because it's it's such a, uh, it took me such a while to work out how to do it. And it's probably one of the more complicated scripts that I wrote out of uh, all of them is uh, basically to get these throttle levers to kind of act in a similar way to what they do in the real aircraft. So in the real aircraft, obviously they're in the shutoff position and then you would start the engines by actually moving them forward, as I'm sure you're aware. And I wanted to see if I could figure out a way to emulate that using the uh, LVARs in Axis and O's. And I did manage to find a way to do it. So what you want to do is when you first spawn in, make sure your throttle levers are in the, the full reverse position. And what you can do then is use the engine mode selector to select these left and right tabs here. So right would activate the right hand side one for the right lever. And then left is uh, obviously the left one. So how I managed to get that to work is you would put the Let's go for the left lever, put the engine mode selector to the left, and then you just need to move the lever forwards. Beautiful, as if you were doing it in the real aircraft. So yeah, I was really happy with how I managed to get that to work out. And then you can actually put the engine mode selector back to normal and the tab gets put down, and then you can just use the lever like normal. Even reverse is working normal as well. And uh, yeah, it's just, I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. And then you can put the, Engine mode selected to the left side, it brings the tab up again and then move it back to the uh, full reverse position and it goes back into the shut off spot. So yeah, I was really, really happy with how that worked out. It's quite complex how I set up the scripting to do that, but uh, you guys don't really need to worry about that too much. And uh, I may do a full tutorial on how I set this up at a later stage, but it is quite complex and a little bit out the scope of this video. So I'm gonna leave that for now. And yeah, that's essentially everything that I set up in Axis and O's for the Throttle Quadrant. And I actually did a few assignments for the side stick as well, which are actually really, really useful. So these are just basically set to the buttons on the base of the joystick. So I'm not going to show you that on the hand cam. Uh, it's essentially just push buttons on the base of the joystick, like I say. So. The first one I set up was the flight director. So I set this button to uh, on, on the on the side stick. So you can turn the flight directors on and off. As you can see here on the PFD, it's going on and off. I also set some of the autopilot functions to the buttons on the base of the side stick. So um, basically going left to right on the top row on the left hand side of the side stick. <laughs> now you can play around with these bindings if you wish. So you don't have to have them on the buttons that I put them on, but uh, I just put them there because they made the most sense. So I put speed mode on there as well on the top left that comes on with one press and then you can toggle it to indicated airspeed as well as climb. So that cycles between those three modes there. Then heading mode as well. There you go. Toggle on and off and nav mode as well. That toggles on and off as well. And I find those three really, really useful for departures. And when you are setting these modes in the autopilot for the first time or on a go around, they'd be super, super useful because then you don't have to reach for your mouse to actually have to press these buttons. So they're really, really useful. I also set up some of the lights as well. So on the bottom row on the left hand side of the base of the joystick, uh, I've got the strobe lights on the far left button that toggles on and off there with a press. The landing lights in the middle button. So I've actually put all of these three switches to one button. So I can turn those on and off. And then the taxi lights again on the right hand side of the base of the joystick. Now. Some reason sometimes you have to press these a couple of times before they register. Like now, it doesn't seem to want to go off. But 
I have had these work perfectly before. And if you ever do find you're getting some strange behaviors with the bindings, what I've found works best is to actually just restart axis and errors. So if I just close this down, it doesn't happen often. But if you just close and reopen it, then it should it should sort itself out. So as you can see, it's brought back all the key bindings. Let's just minimize that. And, and there we go. So that is working now. For some reason, the taxi lights, you have to kind of wait a few seconds in between each press, but uh, it does work. It does toggle on and off, and you're not going to be rapidly toggling it off on and off ever in normal use anyway. So it, uh, yeah, it does work, but uh, yeah, some of the, this taxi line in particular, you just have to wait a few seconds in between presses to get it to work. And one thing I should have said earlier on, actually, is once you've actually imported all of the, the scripts and the templates, I would just restart Axis and O's so you don't have any issues like, like I just have. And uh, I think sometimes it just needs a little bit of a, a reboot uh, once you've changed a lot of things. So that is all of the bindings, really, in the... Uh, axis and O's for both of the controllers there for the quadrant and the side stick. Now, one thing I would just say as well is that I am using the the TCA side stick in co-pilot mode. So it's in my right hand when I'm using it. And if you don't have it in co-pilot mode, if yours says here, uh, well, yours might say this, but it might not work. So you might have your side stick in the pilot mode or the captain's mode. I'm not sure what it's called exactly, but uh, basically it's in left-handed mode. So there's a switch underneath the side stick itself that can switch between these two modes. Obviously I have it, like I say, in the right-handed mode. So if you have yours in the left-handed mode and it and uh, yours says something like T, uh, TA320 pilot, instead of co-pilot, then what you'll need to do is you'll just need to go into each of these and just uh, rebind them to the, the buttons of your choosing. So um, they're pretty self-explanatory, which each of them uh, represents. So this, for example, is the speed button on the autopilot, nav heading, and so on. And then you've got uh, flight directors, and then taxi lights and strobe and landing lights there. So you'll just need to just double click on those and then you just simply need to just press another button on your controller and you can see it just changes there very, very easily. It's it's not difficult to do at all, uh, but you'll need to just do that if you are using the left-handed uh, setup of the side stick. And then just one final thing that I'll need to make you aware of here is that once you have set this all up once and you're happy with everything, what I would then recommend doing is going to templates and then just save current setup as template. Now I've, I've already done it, so I'm not going to do that, but I would save your current setup as a template because every time you change livery in the CRJ, it is actually going to pick that up as a different aircraft. So what you'll need to do is each time you change livery, you'll need to just go into templates and just apply a template to this aircraft and just do it the same as we did before. It's just a couple of clicks, but it's just an unfortunate quirk of how Microsoft Flight Simulator deals with liveries at the moment. And uh, they're all treated as different aircraft. But that uh, is just something you'll have to remember to do each time. It's not a big, big deal. And one final note is just in case you're wondering, all of these binds, they do work fine with the and just in case you're wondering as well, all of these binds should work perfectly fine with the CRJ550 as well as the 700 because uh, they are essentially the exact same cockpit. So they both should work fine. I, I honestly haven't tried them on the 550, but I'm pretty, pretty sure they should work just fine. So like I say, the cockpit is more or less copy paste. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is just copy paste. So yeah, it should work fine. It should use all the same... Uh, uh, local variables. So that is it really. You should have now, if you decided to get axes and O's, a fully, fully working TCA throttle quadrant add-on and side stick, and it's fully operational and, and very, very useful for work in the CRJ. And I hope that's been of some help to you. If if this has helped any of you at all and you've managed to 
get everything sorted as, as you wanted to, do hit that thumbs up button. It does help the channel a lot if you do that. So I would really appreciate that. And if you want to see more content in the future for the CRJ or the A320, do make sure you subscribe to the channel. I want to thank you all for watching this video today. I feel I realize it has been a little bit long-winded. I think it's probably going to turn out as quite a long video in the end. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it nevertheless and got something out of it. And I'll catch you in the next one. So enjoy the rest of your day and bye-bye for now.